Hey folks. Paul Stamets on a remote island in British Columbia. Come closer, I'm gonna show you something. We're in a grove of majestic old growth Douglas firs. And this Douglas fir here is fire burned. Now I know of an, a big fire on this island around 1936. Um, so this tree I estimate to be four or 500 years of age. Um, but many of these tall trees survive fires because they're, they're basically so tall. They can be above the canopy of the fire. But at the base of this is a beautiful colony, a little family of agaricon conchs. And this uh, location was called out to me by some residents in the island that know that we could save this. And their observations, and I concur, is that these conchs are dying off. Now, these are young ones, fortunately, they're coming up. Uh, but this one has died, so is this one. This is a really old one. Someone could have taken it or could have fallen off. No worries. Um, this one, this looks like it's recently died, but this one is a really good condition. Um, we have saved now at least three strains of agaricon from old growth trees, and the trees have been cut or the, they've been destroyed or for whatever reason. So the, saving these strains is really important for the mycodiversity uh, of agaricon, Fomitopsis officinalis, also known as Ly Lyrisophomis officinalis, if it grows on large. Um, so I have a cork borer here, and we don't take the conchs unless, you know, there will be a logging operation or something like that, or left they're on the ground. Um, and this is a cork borer. I've soaked this in isopropanol ethanol in a plastic bag. And I'm going to go underneath here and get a small piece of tissue. And it's really important that you don't break into the topside cuticle here. I make the analogies like putting a hole in a tortoise shell. And then it's a cavity, and it's a site of wound infection and water. And my experience is it, it kills the conch. But going underneath here and getting a small piece of tissue, that's all I need to get it in culture. Um, every time I've done this, um, the hymenial layer here just reheals over the wound. And you can't even see the place that I took the clone. So um, this is important. We have 72 strains of agaricon now, the largest culture library in the world. We're analyzing these for their unique immunomodulatory and, and anti-inflammatory properties. We have really exciting research that we're undergoing, and this is a lifelong effort. Uh, so we're going to try to get this one in culture, and by doing so, we'll, we'll save this strain in perpetuity long after this tree has passed, I hope. So stay tuned. This strain here could be significant. And, and thank you for your support, and thank you for watching, and... Thank you, Dr. Pam, being so good on the camera. <laughs>
So what I've done is I've sterilized the media, poured petri dishes. These scalpels have been sterilized. This cloth and this cloth were sterilized in a bucket in a pressure cooker along with my media. The media is fresh and everything is sterile. Curiously, I have two nails here because I have to push the tissue out of the cork pour and then section it and go into the interior flesh and very carefully put a minute fragment into a petri dish. Now, the potential for this not to go as planned is extremely high. So, um, this is the type of thing you want to do in private, typically not filmed. Um, but I think it's so important that people see this because this is a way of getting a clone of an endangered species uh, without disrupting it from nature, but preserving it genomically for future generations. Um, important for biodiversity, microdiversity, all those right things. So, here we go. Now, this one in particular, I submerged the tissue below the surface so it's in direct contact with the media. I will do and continue to do about 10 of these in the hope that two or three may make it. Um, this actually turned out pretty well. Um, and I'm sure other expert tissue culturists will give me some criticism. Um, but all in all, considering I have high confidence that this should work, at least it was a good attempt. Um, so 
this is the art of cloning. I'm taking a phenotype, I've captured the exact genetic material of the comp that Pam and I found. And now we have a tissue culture and we'll be able to genomically analyze this and compare it for its variety of medicinal properties, which include anti-inflammatory, antiviral, uh, immunomodulating, um, and other attributes that we have not yet discovered. But those are the three categories in particular. We know we have activity uh, within the clades of agaricon, Fomitopsis officinalis. Hi there. Now, several weeks have passed since we originally subcultured the uh, uh, master plate that contained the tissue of agaricon. Now, we ran it out. I was quite surprised how many I was successful on. And we subcultured it into another dish and grew it out. And then, so that's a P1, first time isolated away from the original culture. And then I generated more plates, P2. Now these are beautiful. And this is classic agaricon mycelium. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bank it. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna put it in the test tubes so we can preserve this hopefully for decades, if not centuries. I've got a few little tricks up my sleeve I wanna show you that most people don't know about. Um, so anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and subculture this strain into backup master test tubes, these large ones. Um, and then I'm also going to make some smaller test tubes. I do this oftentimes. I have my master tubes and I have my other tubes. Usually four is sufficient. Now I've sterilized my scalpel and I put it on top of this jar here from Colite. This has been sterilized already. I hold it like this. We have to take off the parafilm because we always parafilm our petri dishes. And then I want to make sure my my cap is loose. So use my little finger here. I have alcohol in my hands. And now I'm sacrificing this plate for now. I'm going to use the whole thing. So I'm going to take up pick, pick up the lid here. That is elegant mycelium. Classic. Okay. are very purposeful. I try to keep everything upstream so I didn't have my hands in front of the test tube or in front of the cap. So I articulated my hands so the cap was upstream. I triangulated in order to put the tissue into this petri dish. I will label this now and I'll make several more and then I'll let it grow out to about this stage here. And I like this a lot. Um, because I want the mycelium to go underneath the glass. So this is a little trick that I've realized, is the surface mycelium can die, but if this culture was in the refrigerator for 10 years, I can, this tissue oftentimes is alive. So I can take it and I, bam, I smash it, I break the glass, I lift the glass of the test tube, and then I regenerate the culture from the mycelium underneath the glass. It's a very, very clever way of doing it. Now we also use liquid nitrogen, that is a preferred technique, so I will do backups, as we know, in both the master test tubes and these regular test tubes, and then eventually put it in the liquid nitrogen. So this is great. We have the strain running of agaricon from this remote island in British Columbia. We're approaching now 80 strains of agaricon in our culture collection. We'll then DNA sequence this to prove that it is indeed agaricon. We'll then populate it into the databases, um, and then we will test this for its multiple uh, properties. So, that's it. Thank you for watching.